think this economy is weak enough for the Fed to cut rates? Just take one look at Nucor, the best of breed steelmaker. They did a new 52 week high today, up 7% among the top five gainers in the SP. After a pretty magnificent quarter last night, these guys delivered a monster earnings beat, even versus the guidance they gave just last month. And this morning, management made some very positive comments about the long term trends that are starting to materialize. So, can the stock keep climbing? Let's check in with Leon Tapali, and he's the chairman, president, and CEO of Nucor. Find out more about the quarter. Leon, welcome back to Man Money. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate you having me today. Well, how could I not? I mean, this was an amazing quarter. And the first thing I want to do before we drill down into the cadence or how much you mon money you made, you're talking about mega trends, which make me feel like don't look at the quarter, don't look at the year even. Think about multiple years for new quarter to do well. Oh, absolutely. And, Jim, not, not, not all of those mega trends suit all of the competition. New is the most, the largest steel producer in North America. And, as we look at, you know, the volumes in the United States, Nucor makes one out of every four tons produced in the U.S. So as we think about IIJA, we think about the CHIPS Act, we think about infrastructure, Nucor is the most diverse steel maker in the United States, poised and ready to capitalize on that. We're just on the early stages of that on all three, and we're starting to see those flow through our orders into plants. We think about CHIPS Act, you know, there's 56 semiconductor plants on the books, 18 already under construction for a total value of about $370 billion that'll be invested. Nucor is going to be a, in participate in all of that. So we're just warming up. And I would tell you at seven and a half times EBITDA, we're one of the most undervalued stocks in Wall Street and an incredible opportunity for our investors. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because you did say at the Cox call that you took a hard look at U.S. steel, obviously being bought by Nippon Steel. But basically, I, if I can it, parse your words a bit, your stock is much cheaper, so why don't you just keep buying your own stock? And that's exactly what we're going to do, Jim. Our strategy since I took over is to grow the core and expand beyond. So grow our core steelmaking assets and expand into those adjacent steel-centric businesses that operate just outside of the cyclicality of steel. And so you're going to see Nucor buy a lot of our stock back. And, um, and at the end of the day, we're not going to overpay for any assets. So as we looked at it, um, we looked and saw some assets might fit strategically and, and culturally. But at the end of the day, again, we have a lot of uses for that capital, and not the least of which is giving it back. Over the last four years, we've given back $10 billion to our shareholders. And so we're going to continue to reward them uh, for sticking with us, and we're going to continue to grow this company. All right. So people understand that's 23 percent of the of the shares have been bought back since 2018. Now, one of the things that has me very, very excited is, is that the other part of the money you're using is to build giant and I should say sustainable mills that are going to produce all sorts of new steel that will meet the demands of uh, particularly of, uh, of non-residential construction. Absolutely. Jim, we just kicked off, and the Brandenburg team in uh, Kentucky is operating now in the largest, most capable plate mill in the United States. Um, we're broken ground now in West Virginia on one of the most state-of-the-art, what will be one of the most sustainable sheet mills anywhere in the nation. We're building our micro mill in Lexington, North Carolina. We're expanding in Kingman, Arizona. We're building galvanizing capacity. So we're going to continue to create and make opportunities and provide capabilities for our customers so they can continue to grow their companies and, again, ultimately rewarding new core shareholders. In the last three years, we have made more money in the last three years than we have in the last 20 combined. So new core is firing on all cylinders. And quite frankly, we're just getting warmed up. Now, I think a lot of people might say, wait a second, the Fed tightened faster than it ever has, rates are above five. But you made a point both in our interview and, in, of course, in the conference call and the deck, that you're, you're building and buying a lot of kind of steel that really isn't all that sensitive to what the Fed does. Yeah, and, and look, we're, we're, again, the diversity of Nucor is we're consuming a lot of that downstream. And so we're touching every sector of the market. So while one sector may be a little off and we're seeing some pullback in some, right, we're seeing a slowing in the adoption rate in EVs, we have others that are firing on all cylinders. We think about the, you know, the three mega trends. We think about power transmission, grid hardening, rebuilding the entire infrastructure of the United States. Nucor is poised and ready to capitalize on all of that. And we're going to continue to do that. Well, I mean, that's a good point. For instance, you said that uh, tractors, earth movers, 
not doing well, and, and yet you would think if they're not doing well, you wouldn't be doing well. But the fact is, is that you have many different applications, and you are not just going to be like a, an old steel mill, frankly, just putting up buildings. And if they're not buying, if not buying buildings, you got nothing to do. No, we're we're touching every sector of the economy, from automotive to ag to energy to all the mega trends. We're we're moving our company and positioning us for higher highs. In 2022, we shared with our uh, the investment community that we expected a through cycle EBITDA, EBITDA of about 6.7 billion. Last year, which was the third best year of Nucor, we did 7.4. So again, over the last four years, to return over 30 or make over 30 billion dollars in EBITDA. Again, Nucor's strategy is paying incredible dividends for your viewers, our shareholders, customers, and our team members. Uh, one last thing about our viewers, we have a lot of young viewers. They're probably saying, no, wait a second. Uh, steel, dirty business. Could you remind them who the largest recycler in the Western Hemisphere is? It is Nucor. And we are one of the fifth largest in the world in terms of recycling. We are one of the cleanest steel makers on the planet. And so... You know, we don't have to pivot. We're already there, but we're not stopping. As the largest producer in the United States, we're going to continue to invest in those technologies that help to deliver a net zero product. And we're doing that for many of our customers today. We're going to continue to push that and, uh, and continue our leadership position in this industry. Well, you've been a great leader and steward of Nucor, known for a long time, and it's just a remarkable thing you've put together here. So many good things. Leon Tapalia is Nucor Chair, President and CEO. Hey, Leon, it's great to see you. Really fabulous quarter. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Great to see you as well. Absolutely. Have a great night. Okay, you too. May everybody's back after the break. Coming up, pop open those umbrellas and tee up your toughest questions. Kramer takes on all comers in the lightning round. Next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.